Hey neighbors, how y'all doing out there? It's Missy, and this is the verse of the day. We are in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. And it's coming out of the New Living Translation. I'm just making sure I'm giving y'all the right one. Yeah, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. It says, How great are you, O sovereign Lord? There is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. So, this verse right here is giving God his props, okay? Because there's nobody like him nobody so it says that he is sovereign so let's go to the dictionary and find out what that means to be sovereign is to be considered or known as a monarch a king queen or other superior Ruler. That means overall, you calling all the shots. You got the juice. <laughs> yes, honey. It says a person who has supreme power or authority. And that he does. Jesus has authority over all in anything. Above, on, and under the earth. Things that are seen and unseen. It says, a group or body of persons or a state of having sovereign authority. I'll get to that one a little bit later because I like that. So, he is the supreme ruler, the king of all. He's God. So let's go back to that scripture. It says, how great are you? This is someone giving him some praise, letting him know, giving him worship, letting him know how great he is. God don't have to tell himself that he's great. By us being his temple here on earth, that's our job. To worship him, to praise him, to shabak him, to give him glory and praise. Because he's great and he's sovereign. He's all powerful, all knowing, all seeing. And people get so mad at God and be like, okay, if he's all powerful, why did he let this happen? That happened. And you know what? God is God, but at the same time. When he cast um, a little old angel down here called Satan, he became, or he allowed him to have the rule on this earth. So, evil things will go on on this earth, but those that belong to God are protected from the evil that's on this earth will you still go through things yes but will you be able to survive and make it through them of course you will abundantly you will come out of it prosperous and stronger and better so yes he do allow things but the things god allow if you continue to trust and believe in him he will use those things that were made to destroy you to catapult you into a life you would have never imagined you could be in if you just hold on and be patient. Because he's good like that. 
It says, there is no one like you. There is no one like him. And you want, you know why I feel, now this is my opinion. You may have your own. And it's okay. We can all think and believe how we want to. That's free will. That's another thing God has given us. That's another thing. See, he's a good God. He is a gentleman. He is not forcing no nothing on nobody. So if you're around a Christian or anybody else and they forcing stuff down your throat, you need to move around. Because if God would not do it, then those who say they belong to him should not do it either. That's why if I go around the LGBT community, I'm not condemning them. I'm not hating them. I'm not telling them that God hates them. God is love. Yes, we might not be cool with how somebody else lives their life, but guess what, baby? That's their life. That's not your life. That's not my life. That's their life. If they choose to lay down with whoever they want to live with, I mean, lay down with whoever they want to lay down with, that's their decision. I'm not going to tell somebody I hate them because they live in their life. Because at the end of our life, we must all stand before God if we believed in him or not and have to answer to what we did, the decisions we made for our life. So the things I did in my past, present, and future, those are the things that I will have to answer for. Kathy. No one else in this world is going to have to answer God but me for me. So when you judge other people because of their lifestyle, you acting like you God. Yes, we know in the Bible it says certain things is wrong, but you just can't pinpoint one sin out and condemn a person because one sin is no greater than the other. A person might have a... Um, a same-sex relationship or marriage but if you lying or if you stealing or if you murdering somebody or if you sleeping with somebody husband or wife uh are you in the wrong too so we have to be careful that's why I say um why are you worried about the stick in your brother eye when you have a beam in your eye if we focus on taking care of ourselves first, then seeing our own problems, our own mistakes, our own mess, our own drama will humble us and make us run to God so we can receive forgiveness and help through His Son, Jesus Christ. So then, therefore, He can bless us to be able to help somebody else. You can't help nobody and you judging them. It ain't going to work. Because people will feel the offense in your heart. People will feel that you're judging them. That you're talking about them. But if you're able to come to them in love. And first love them for just them. Then just maybe you may get your point across. But. God is love. So when I say that I love y'all, I'm not loving y'all with my love. Because my love is weak. <laughs> my love need crutches sometimes. Okay? I need the love of God within me to be able to love those who bring it across my past. Because I'm not perfect. Nor will I ever be perfect. I don't try to be perfect. But I do make sure that I'm the best me I can possibly be. And that's all I can be. And that's all I can do. And that's okay with my father. Because he promised where I am weak, he will show himself strong and mighty in my life. So I'm cool having weaknesses. Do you feel me? I'm cool not having the best of everything in this world. Because it all belongs to our Father anyway. So people may stunt on it. But you better watch out. Because the Word of God says He will give me houses I did not build or land. 
I did not buy. So therefore, it had blessings out there for me. And I believe that they are mine. But I must ask for them and I must believe. So therefore, I can receive. That's faith. Believing in things that are not seen. So, there is no one like him. His love is unmatchable. And the reason why I feel as though, my opinion, okay? <laughs> uh, the reason why I feel as though there is no one like God is because out of all of my 36 years of living, God is the only God that has came after me. Yeah, I said it. He came after me. All my life, he protected me. He provided for me. He was guiding me when I, when I wanted to listen. Half the time I didn't because I was hard-headed. I wanted to do me, boo. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But even in the midst of me doing me, he still loved me. He still cared for me. He still protect me. He still sent people in my life to help lead me and guide me back on the path that I should have been on, that I shouldn't have never left. But this is life. And things happen. Some days you may lose your job. He's there to be your provider. You might lose a loved one. And he's there to help you hold and handle that grief that can bring you in a pit so deep. It seems like you'll never come out of it. I know. I said I didn't felt the pain of not having the two most important people in your life. I felt it, but yet and still, I'm still here thriving and surviving because of the love of God. No other God, and I will be not. I will not be mentioning no other God's name because this is God's platform. And he is a jealous God. So I will not be giving no glory to no other God on this channel. But people say there's other gods out there. But if there is, they never came after me like God has. He came after me. He showed his love to me. He had people show love to me at times when I was out of there. I was no good. I, I gave up. I threw in the towel. It been times in my life I was suicidal. But yet and still, I'm still here only because of the power of God and the love that he had for me. And he don't only love me like that. He loves you like that. Because it was times in my life I ran from God. I didn't want this calling on my life. I didn't want gifts. I didn't, I didn't want to be considered a Christian, a hypocrite, somebody who just tell other people what they should do and then you go out and live your life any kind of way. I didn't want to misrepresent God because I knew I wasn't ready. So I stayed out in them streets and I did whatever I wanted to do. Did I pay for that decision? Yes, I did. I did. But it was my choice, though, y'all. This is what I need to get y'all to understand. It's your choice in life. How you gonna live your life. But when you have a God that loves you and cares for you and want to show you your predestined future, what he has planned for you, what you was created to do. Don't run. I know you, everybody like different things, but when I was young, when God was trying to first save me, excuse me, 
when I was a teenager. I wanted to go to clubs. I wanted to party. I wanted to drink. I wanted to smoke. I wanted to freak. I wanted to get nasty. I wanted to do everything. <laughs> I wanted to do everything. I wanted to travel. I wanted to live lavish. I wanted to... To do... Everything that I can do right now. Just with a better heart and a better mind. If I want to have sex right now, I can have sex, but I choose not to because I'm not married. Have I had sex before? Of course, I'm 36 year old. How many 36 year old virgins you know? <laughs> I'm not one of them. <laughs> Did I wish I would have saved my virginity? Of course, because the person I gave it to wasn't worth it. Wasn't worth it. So any young women out there that's watching this video, hold on to your goodies. Keep your flower closed. Don't bloom it before it's time. I'll talk, I'll do another video on that because I got to go deep with that one. But keep yourself, keep your heart. Young men, if you got any young men watching this video, if you're not a player, you're not a pimp just because you sleep with a lot of women. You are messing up your future. Because so many things can happen. You can get a young woman pregnant. You can catch some STDs and some of them stay with you until you die. They can't be cured by a pill. You can lose your life if you sleep with the wrong woman. But all these guys, uncles, daddies that's telling their sons to go out there and have sex with all these women, you're just hurting that child because you're leading them down the wrong path. It's not cool to have sex with a whole bunch of women. What do you have to give a woman after giving yourself to everybody? What's special about it? Where's that self-worth? Keep something for the woman and the man that's going to love you fully and truly for the rest of your life. Instead of just giving yourself away like some candy on Halloween. Everybody can get a piece. You must love yourself. Know your self-worth. Treasure yourself. I'm not saying put yourself above nobody else, but don't let nobody use you. And treat you any kind of way. And do you any kind of way. God teaches us that. And he helps us with that. By his rules. His regulations. His precepts. His commandments. Yeah it just sounds like a whole bunch of rules. But they will help you guide your life. So you may live your best life. So you may live your best life. That's all God wants. Is for you to live your best life down here. Then for you to transition and to live again eternity with him. Living an even better life that you could possibly ever live on this earth. But we can't do that following other people, other gods, other idols. Putting everything before God and leaving him on the back burner. Telling him to wait, wait, wait. When all he's trying to do is to give you the very life that you want. And people say, I'll come to God when I get ready. I'm, I got to get myself together first. You can't get yourself together. Oh. <laughs> Honey. You can't get yourself together. Yourself. You did not make yourself. You were created. So, you have to go to the one who created you to repair the damage that this world has caused in your life. You can't repair yourself. I hear that all the time. God know my heart. God, he do know your heart and he know you need help. <laughs> That's why he sent people to love on you, to care for you, to help you. 
but when we are in our mess our mind is so messed up to where the people we need we push away and the people that we don't need we cling to them like like a uh a cheetah on a um a gazelle's butt you know how they put their claws in that animal after they done ran and got on them and hold on to them and be biting them. That's how we are to people that we don't need in our life. We get so addicted to what we don't need to when we what we do need comes to us. We reject it because it's so different from everything else we've been doing how we've been living how we've been moving the type of crowd the type of people we have choose to surround ourselves with and it takes a lot of love and it takes a power it takes power it takes grace it takes mercy and god give that to us all but you got to steal away. Sometimes you got to get to yourself away from everybody so you can hear your own thoughts for yourself. Sometimes we be around people so long to where uh, we start getting their mannerisms. We start talking like them, acting like them. And when, when you separate yourself from people and start to be your true self, who you feel as though you are on the inside, people say you changed. <laughs> Of course, because you're now yourself and not all the things that people have tried to put in you or say that you were. Like people can say, oh, you're this, you're that, you're this. But that might not be you. Only you know who you truly are. And that's why God is so powerful because if he created us, he know what we were created for. And what we were created to do here on this earth. Everybody has a job. And we must accomplish the job. So get on the job. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't let other people live and rule your life. You already have a ruler. You already have a supreme being. You have God. <clears throat> but you must acknowledge him as God so all those blessings all that prosperity all that favor can be on your life so you can accomplish your goals like nobody else can but you so are there other gods out there with a little g because he's the only one with the big g okay <laughs> is there other gods out there that people praise and worship and and burn incense and burn candles and all that for a year am i mad at them people no why missy because they are doing them some people was born into a religion or uh different traditions and customs and it takes years sometimes to break out of those things so i'm not judging nobody because that's not my job. Because I don't want to be judged by my Lord. Because he said if you judge, you shall be judged. By the harshness that you judge others. So, <laughs> I ain't judging nobody. You hear me? Because I know I'm not perfect. And I know I've done things. And yes, have I been given for them things? But just knowing. You don't hear me. Just knowing that I did the things that I did in the past. Help me humble myself when I come across anybody in any situation. Because I know times get hard. Your mind be messed up. You be going through stuff and you be ready to lose it sometimes. And sometimes you just trying to survive. And sometimes you just trying to make it to the next day. Be careful who y'all put y'all mouth on. Warning comes before destruction. Watch who you put your mouth on. Because if you put your mouth on a child of God, that person don't belong to themselves. They belong to God. And vengeance is God's. So he will come to his children's defense. He's a father. 
He's a mother. He's a grandparent. Whatever you need God to be, he can be that for you, for me, for anybody who needs him. That's why it says, oh, great you are. Oh, how great you are. Oh, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. I've never heard of nobody bigger, badder, greater, more loving, more kind, more better than God. If they have, if there is, no one ever told me about them. So till that day come where somebody can convince me that something is bigger and better than my God, I'm down like four flat tires with my God, with my Lord, with my Savior, with my Comforter. And I'm riding this thing out till I see him face to face. I hope you enjoyed this verse of the day. I know it was long. <laughs> But that is what was on my heart. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you wasn't offended because everything I say, I say it with the love of Christ. And I mean it with good intentions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know how you feel. I appreciate it. And make sure you subscribe. If you haven't been getting my videos, sometimes you have to unsubscribe and resubscribe because y'all know YouTube be tripping. I'll see you next time. Bye.